everybody. I hope you're doing marvelously well. This has got to be one of our most requested plugin demos. We often get asked to demo new things, but this one in particular has been, well, we've had a lot of emails and a lot of comments about it. And our good friend, Mr. Matt Lang, has already been using it for a little bit. And he actually has a portion of this video where he demonstrates it, and he's been using it for some time. It's by a company called Three Body Technology. I was looking at the website there. It's the Kirchhoff EQ, which for some of you, might be a name you recognize because it's a famous German physicist who I think came up with the terminology black body radiation. Super smart guy who also had a lot of, to do with electronics and everything. So cool name. From what I've been told is it has a schnizzle ton of emulations. Now, I've talked about this a lot over the years where I've been saying I wish there was just a plugin that had everything in it but was easy to understand. To be honest, this could be it. If it's everything that it promises, it has an interface which reminds me of a classic wave style and fab filter looking interface. It looks like it has a spectrum analyzer built into it so you can see what you're hearing, which for people learning is really useful. You know, you, you hear frequencies, you hear something, and you're not sure what it is, and you, you can't quite identify the exact space, and then you look at it and you can mess around and see if that's the frequency. Visual cues are good for learning, let's be honest, as long as you use your ears first. So that's pretty fantastic. And then the second thing, of course, is all of these different emulations. It looks like they've got an SSL style EQ here. It looks like here down, it looks like there's a Neve one. This is the kind of thinking that we want. I've been saying this for a long time. If I was 13, 14, 15 year old kid, again, coming up making music, why do I need to buy 47 different kinds of plugins? Wouldn't it be really, really cool if somebody incorporated all of the features in a plugin, number one, but secondly, made it easy to use? So I'm going in completely cold. So we're going to find out, is it easy to use? Can the idiot Warren figure out how to use this? So the good folks at Three Body Technology have allowed us to give away three copies of this lovely plugin. So don't forget, you can enter to win. Now, you never have to pay to win a prize. So if somebody emails you or messages you and says, you have to pay money, you don't. We will email you from a Produce Like a Pro email address. It will be from us. You will not be asked to pay for anything. So avoid the scams of the YouTube, the YouTube scammers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open a schnizzle ton of instances. If you have a look here, all the way down, it's on every single channel, which I think is 57 instances. Let's press play and see what happens. Now, this is the song that we did the other day when we did the mixing in the box. You can download the multi-tracks down below. So if you haven't already, please download them. One of the things that usually craps out is when you take like a couple of bar piece and loop it. Usually it won't go through the loop if there's too many plugins on it. Okay, so it's the first question that I always get asked is how much CPU does it use? Well, I've got 57 of them open, and so far, so good. Unless I'm going to put three on a particular track, I think 57 instances on a song which already has quite a lot of plugins on it is a pretty big deal. Okay, now, this is the song we were mixing the other day, and it's pretty close, but we probably want to do some, you know, finite stuff. So let's give it a listen and see what we can do with the brand new Kirchhoff plugin. So on this acoustic guitar, we had this excessive amount of low end, and it was due to the recording. The mic was probably too close to the sound hole, and there was a lot of low end. So I already removed a lot of low end and high passed. So I have heard that there is also 
a dynamic EQ in here. Look at that. So I press the D function here, I get to a dynamic EQ. I can go above and below, create the range that I want it to work on. So have a listen. So a lot of build up in this area. Really ugly there. So I can just EQ it out like that. But I can control the range. Now get a nice even low end. Before. Ugly. Now controlled. Let's hear that in the track. I actually want to. Go to some mid-range. Let's go to earlier in the song. Amazing. All right, okay, so it's an easy to use dynamic EQ and general EQ. We've got 57 instances open and it seems to be working great. Okay, let's go to that vocal and let's get creative on it. All I have is, at the moment, a compressor on it. When it all comes crashing down, when it all I think that's like an SM7. You can hear that mid-range. It's fantastic. But let's have some fun with it. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to grab an EQ here. And I want to see what our options are. Clicking where it says bell curve. I got bell, low shelf, high pass, high shelf, low pass, notch. Obviously be good for like ring, you know, like filters that you want to get rid of. Band pass, tilt shelf. That's always nice. Tilt EQs. Um, flat tilt top. Sword. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. You can have some real fun with this, but you know what I'm going for. Here's all the different EQs. So type E is definitely, let's be honest, that is definitely going to be an SSL style EQ. Yeah, it is. So have a listen to that. When it all comes crashing down. Bypass. When it all it's got that SSL smooth top end. I'll bring down the boost just a little bit. Let's hear it in the track. When it all, all, all comes crashing down. When it all, all, all comes crashing down. When it all, all, all comes crashing down. It's a little bit of four, four and a half K sh crash. Sh sh so let's just, let's have some fun. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the dynamic on this. I'm going to select the range control up and down. When it all Great. So on that crash, when it got really excessive, you saw it dipping. When it all, all, all comes crashing down. Win. I mean, there you go. Now we've got our dynamic EQ doing our DSing. Nice. When it all. How sexy was that? Oh, should I say that? Am I allowed to say that? No, that was pretty amazing. So we opened up the EQ on the top and then we just used it to just get those S's that were too aggressive. 
pretty freaking awesome. Okay. No wonder Matt loves this. No wonder everybody's asking us to review it. Okay, let's have a listen to the bass. Let's go to the end. So maybe just a little bit of control on that 80 area. It's about 90, isn't it? It's in that area there. So just a little bit, let's put the dynamic on. Listen to the whole section. Oh, nice and even. I see why Matt loves it. I see why everybody's freaking out on me. I remember the overheads being a little excessive on the hi-hat. Let's see if we can get a little bit of control. After. Let's go a little nuttier on this. And move this up. Oh, yeah. So what I like about that now is I've controlled some of that mid kind of bite on the overheads. It means that I can actually brighten like 7K and above and get lots of air on the overheads, but know that I'm not bringing up the hi-hat as much. Pretty tasty. Yeah, I'm getting this a lot. Let's try some other sounds. Um, let's get the snare and let's choose a classic. So we got Type E and Type G SSL style. Then you've got British N, which of course must mean... You guessed it. So I'm going to go to 110. It's a Neve style here. Boost it. those grace notes so well. Hit bypassed. Bypass. On. Freaking awesome. By the way, no drum samples were were harmed in the mixing of this track. So download the multi-tracks. You can follow along. We did a mix with this already. This could be the one EQ plugin to rule them all. Now, there are lots of really good EQ plugins on the market. Of course there are. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's 
Anyone that gives you those styles of EQs, like a neutral EQ, which you would get in a Waves or a Fab Filter, and then SSL style and Neve style EQ. So I suppose my next question would be, because I don't know the answer, is do they have like an API style? I'm opening a can of worms here. Let's go on to the roads. So I'm going to have a look. Tone Shack, Vintage Tube. EQ250. Oh, I love being able to hear the hammers now. on that bass is so good. That's super, super pro sounding. You know what I mean? It just feels like the bass is there the whole time. And the way we always used to do that back in the olden days, and I used to love watching Mark Ender mix bass, was just Fader. He would even it out, compress an EQ, and then he had no problem with writing every single note so it sat there beautifully. That just feels like the most perfectly played, you know, Leland Sklar, right hand, perfect technique, every note being even. I've recorded him and he's phenomenal. That sounds like Lee played that. That is so good. All right, I'm very excited. Now I know why everybody's raving. I'm not first to it, but really, really digging these. Check it out. Let's go over to Matt Lang and let's see what he gets to do with this lovely plugin. Hey folks, Matt Lang here. And I'm about to show you how I like to use the Kirchhoff EQ by Three Body Tech. Quite honestly, the Kirchhoff EQ, I believe, is the most forward-thinking and exciting EQ to come out in years. And it has so many features, I'm not gonna dive into those. There is so much documentation already on the internet and Warren probably has spoken about those as well, but it's daunting and staggering. That being said, I'm gonna show you how I'm using the Kirchhoff EQ in a track of my own, and quite frankly, it's absolutely brilliant, and I truly love it. So let me show you how this works. All right, so here we are in my session, and lo and behold, this is our lovely Kirchhoff EQ right here, and you know, in a similar kind of style as like the Slate Infinity EQ, or you know, the FabFilter Pro EQ, or uh, even DMG Audio's uh, Equilibrium and Equality. It's uh, very much you know, click a node and do with it what you will. If you want, you can bring up you know all your bands at once. You can see them right there. I love that you have uh, an individual control for the sides as well as a stereo width control at the bottom, and I use that a little bit later. But starting off, let's talk about the first way I'm using this thing, and that is on a vocal. And this is the vocal without the Kirchhoff EQ. It's got plenty of other processing though, but without Kirchhoff, it's this. Keep telling yourself anything. Keep so, and what I have Kirchhoff doing is this. Keep telling yourself anything. Now here's what's so cool about this. I wanted to have a lot more high end in this vocal because I like really airy vocals and the processing already going on kind of killed a bunch of the high end, so I wanted to bring it back. However, when you do that, you bring your S's up and obviously I don't really want these to have sharp S's. So the first thing I did is in this high band right here. You know, let me just turn off all my bands for the time being, but we'll turn on the high band. And what makes this EQ, Kirchhoff EQ, so exciting to me is the dynamic section. The EQ alone sounds great, and it's got models of various kind of EQ curves, like, you know, your Neves and SSLs and what have you. Uh, that's cool, I don't care as much about that. The dynamic session is amazing. And that was, I've never been a big Pro-Q fan. I was always more in the DMG Audio Equilibrium camp, 
but when Pro-Q3 came out with its dynamic section, I would use Pro-Q just for the dynamic section and then do my other main EQing with other things. And with Kirchhoff, that combines everything into the same plugin itself. It's like all of the best of both worlds. And it's just phenomenal. And also the dynamic section in here gives you so much control, so much more than Pro-Q3 does, where it's pretty much, you know, you pull down a fader and that's about it. Um, this, you really have independent control over the ratio and range positive and negative, as well as the attack and release. Like, it's really great. Oh, and you can sidechain. You can take an external sidechain source and use that to trigger an EQ band, which is what I'm doing in a different example. But let's talk about this vocal. I mean, the thing is, as you can tell, I get excited because this is just a breathtaking EQ. But anyway, so like I was saying, I want to have more high end in this vocal, but I don't want to bring up the S's. So what I did, I boosted this airy area. It's at 8K, give or take. And I boosted it by just under uh, 8 dB, which is a fair amount of boosting. So without the dynamic section, this is what this would be doing on that vocal. Keep telling yourself and you can hear, like, it sounds nice and airy, but those S's kill you. Now, when I turn on the dynamic section, and basically, I brought it down, so I set my the total range. I don't want any more compression more than 11 dB, 11.2, which is a fair amount. And I adjusted the attack just a touch to make it a little bit quicker than the default. But now, whenever that high end gets past the threshold, it's going to clamp it down. So the brilliance of this, no pun intended, or pun intended, up to you, um, the brilliance of this is that I can boost everything, and then when it gets too high, it's going to push it back down. So I can get an airy vocal without having the harsh the harsh S's, it de-S's automatically for me. So now check out the difference. Keep telling yourself anything. So I got the best of both worlds right there, and it's just, it's phenomenal. The fact I can just do it that quickly and that in the box and have so much control, just amazing to me. And then also I did a similar thing, and this is on my low mids, strictly on like, the thing, she's holding that note, uh, this is Carrie Leva saying, and she's got a wonderful voice, but she doesn't have such a wonderful 200 hertz in this one little section, uh, 191.9 to be exact. And that's not her own fault, but um, it just is what it is. So similar thing, I could have done this on a static EQ and not dynamic, but then it kind of would have taken that out, out of uh, all of her voice. And I don't need that when she's singing higher. I don't want to thin her out when I don't need to. It's only when her voice gets a little too, uh, in this case, a little too like low midi, a little too bassy right about there. That's when I can duck her out a bit. So same thing, I enable the dynamic section, and this time I set my range to be just about minus three because I don't want to be, I don't want to make her anemic sounding. And you can control, of course, the amount with the threshold, but between a combination of the threshold and the range, you can really fine tune the exact amount of compression uh, or dynamic range reduction, if you will. Uh, on that band. So with I, what I did with her is uh, you're gonna hear it, or you're actually gonna hear it, and you're gonna see it on that very last note she holds out. Keep telling yourself anything. Keep so yeah, as I said, it just cleans up that low mid range and it really just works really well, but because dynamic, it's reactive to the vocal. And I love dynamic EQs, especially on vocals, because vocals themselves are so dynamic. I mean, they I believe they are the most dynamic instrument we have. So having a dynamic EQ, which adjusts in real time to the dynamics of the vocal, that to me really is just, it's the perfect fit. So I love it. That works so great. And I use that across the vocal chain for these kind of things. So let's move on to uh, what I have else. I also had a high pass filter just at the end, but that's just a catch all. and. It's not particularly exciting. And I was running this in 117 bit mode, which is uh, supposedly more high resolution. And Kirchhoff has a whole, or I'm sorry, uh, Three Body Tech, they have a whole document onto why it matters online. And if you're interested in that really techy side of it, read it, it's interesting. Once again, the most exciting thing for me is not the technicality behind it, it's how it works in practice. And this is one of those plugins that combines the technicality and the practical use in such a beautiful, beautiful way. So let's look at the next thing. And this is how I'm using it on a kick drum. This is my kick right here. Without Kirchhoff, sounds like this. And with Mr. Kirchhoff, or Miss, 
And all I'm doing, I'm using it again in dynamic mode. And uh, this time I'm using uh, one of the filter or the modeled filters. Um, I'm using Vintage Tube, Vintage Tube Boost. I don't know exactly which one this is, but it sounded good. I liked the curve. But uh, I'm using it this time as an expander. So every time the kick hits, it's going to bump up that frequency. Uh, it's about 48 hertz. It's going to bump that up just by about 2 dB or so. A little bit less than 2 dB. I have my range set to 2 dB, but I, uh, the way I have my threshold hit, it's hitting it a little bit less. It's closer to like 1.5 or 8. But uh, just to show you actually how the range works a bit better, check this out. So since I'm using this as an expander, as the threshold gets further down, it's going to basically expand that frequency that much further. And in this case, it is, of course, uh, that 48 hertz. I'm going to set my range back to, uh, to 2. But it works really effectively. And I'm just going to fix my threshold so it's hitting about 1.5 again. There we go. Just about there. That's fine. And it's simple. It works. And it works better than a static EQ because I don't want it boosting all the time. This actually just makes my drum be a little bit more dynamic. And you would think it's a kick drum, you know, just boost it. Yeah, this sounds better to my ears. That's just the reality. And yep, a cat jumped on a keyboard and shook the room. And this is my life. Now, let's take a look at how I'm using this on some acoustic guitars. And uh, to be fair, they uh, <laughs> actually, where are these new uh, revert? Here we go. New acoustic reverse. So this is what it sounds like. So I'm basically using it like a de uh, again. Cat, you are shaking the room. You must leave. This is what it is. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm using the acoustic, or I'm using the high end as a de-esser on the acoustic, just because it got a little bit bright, a little bit shrill, and these are reversed acoustic guitars. They sound cool. Um, but yeah, it gets a little bit shrill at times. So dynamic mode, and I'm using a high shelf, and every time it gets above the threshold, it's just going to clamp down that really like shrill part. right there. So if, say, I took this off, it would sound like this. So it just cleans up that high end. And then I am using some static EQ here. Shocking, right? Um, and it's just pulling down those low mids by, say, 3 dB. There's a high pass filter. So without any processing, the acoustic reversed would be this. And with the dynamics and the static low mid, sounds great. Just works. It's just a brilliant EQ. And there's one other fun thing I am doing with this also on uh, different acoustic guitars. And this is where the sidechain comes into play. And so here's the acoustic. So you see it's jumping down there, and what's going on, right? Well, sidechain to the vocal. So let's pull up the vocal right up here. It's that same vocal from earlier. So let's go back to our acoustic. Keep telling yourself, keep telling yourself. So effectively, what that's doing is every time that vocal comes in, the mid-range in this acoustic guitar, uh, any of the mid-range that's actually like fighting with her vocal in particular, it's the side chain of the vocal is going to push down that frequency band of the acoustic guitars. But I don't want to cut that frequency out of the acoustic guitars when the vocal isn't there, because that can make the vocal sound anemic. And for instance, let me show you what, like, let's, you know, let's turn off dynamic mode. I'm going to copy the settings of this just so we don't mess it up. But let's say I just took that band and dipped it like, you know, about as far as what it's actually doing against the vocal. 
versus big difference, right? With dynamic mode, it's not going to do that because there are moments like here where the vocal isn't going to hit it as hard. And you see at the very end, the word comes in. But I don't want to kill the mid-range if there's nothing going on that's fighting it. So the beauty of doing it this way is that it's only going to actually cut that mid-range when the vocal comes in and pushes it down. And this is such a wonderful trick for creating a dynamic mix that with everything can stay really full, but it works just everything. It's kind of like a, an organism where everything is just working against each other. And this is something I love this style of mixing because everything reacts. It's all dynamic. And so consequently, let's say I just unsolo everything. Let's play this one little section. You'll just, you'll hear how it works and it just keeps everything sounding full and really quite nice. It just keeps everything in line and it's it sounds great. It really works really well. And the last thing I'm doing with this, uh, because we can, I put it on my master, just kind of as like a, a light pre-master kind of thing. And you can see that I definitely have some uh, low-grade noise going on in this session from something. I don't know what, but it's happening and bizarrely the high band is reacting to that. But uh, anyway, so what I've done here, uh, I just have three bands and uh, this middle band isn't doing anything. I don't know why it's engaged, but it is. And let's pull these up and so you can see what's going on here. Like you said, oh, yeah, this isn't doing anything, so let's just get rid of that. But um, yeah, it's just high end. Who would have thought? Anyway, uh, I'm going to play it and you're going to see it react. So let's talk about what it's doing a little bit. First thing, I'm doing a similar trick like I did with that vocal, where I'm boosting a little bit of the high end, obviously by much less at this point. It's not even a full dB, but I have the dynamic mode on. So every time it gets a little too much, like those shakers have a lot of high end. So when the shakers hit, it's going to get pushed down just by a little bit, but it says by 2 dB. Um, and that is a funny little thing going on, but it's happening. And same thing with these low mids. Um, I actually have it set so there's no actual gain without the dynamics, but when it gets, you know, when the when that mid-range frequency gets a little too heavy, it's just going to dip it down. I have my range set to minus 1.2, so it's very minute, but I'm using this really as like a mastering tool and I don't want to do extreme changes. And then I'm doing a similar thing with the low end here. And uh, every time it just boosts, it brings up the low end all of the whole track by 1 dB, but if it gets to be a little much, then it just pushes it down by 1 dB and basically brings it back to unity. So that allows me to keep everything nice and full and it just, uh, it reacts when it needs to. And that's great. But the other thing that is really cool about this is because I have control over the width and the sides, I brought the sides up by, what is it, 1.7, and just widens the track just very slightly. I'll just show you an extreme example of it, but it's a fantastic little tool. That's all the sides. You can mono everything. Or hear only the sides before you were just hearing the mid. But I found by boosting the sides, just by a slight amount in this case, it was less than 2 dB, it just made everything a little bit wider and it just added just a little bit more depth to this mix. So all in all, the Kirchhoff EQ is just, it's honestly a joy to mix with. And I do believe there is some kind of summer sale going on from Three Body Technology, so you should check it out because the Kirchhoff EQ already is a steal for 
how inexpensive it is for how good it is. And like I said before, this is the most exciting EQ I have used in years and is replacing a lot of the tools I was using before. It sounds phenomenal. It has so much control and it is oh so powerful. Like frankly, it's just, it's a joy to use. And if you're into really like insane EQs, but also having immaculate control over everything, you gotta check this thing out. It's just absolutely great. So don't forget, you can win one of the three copies of this wonderful plugin. Enter down below. Thank you, Matt Lang, for contributing. I really appreciate it. It was actually Matt that first told me about this plugin weeks and weeks ago, maybe even months ago. And thank you, everyone that wrote and left messages and told us to check it out. I am not disappointed. Again, 57 instances, no crashing. Put it in loop. You saw it all happen. Pretty amazing. So long, everybody. Farewell. Avida Zen. Au revoir. Two scenes. Adios. Adios. Dos Vidania. Um, sayonara. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. Avida Zen. Au revoir. Adios.